this is a very special episode of the I Read Comic Books podcast. We asked our amazing listeners to make donations in support of the protest calling for racial justice. And a huge thanks to Vishal Gulapali for donating and making this episode happen. I am joined for this special episode by Nick White. Hey. And we are talking about video games. In specific, uh, Vishal had asked us to talk about Dark Souls and Bloodborne, some Metal Gear Solid stuff and Kingdom Hearts. So Nick and I decided, let's spend this very small mini so and try to talk about all three as well as some other things that we like about video games in general so i sat down as someone who doesn't play dark souls or metal gear or kingdom hearts and said there's definitely comic book tie-ins for this so i decided to read dark souls volume one from titan comics and kingdom hearts final remix volume one which is from yen press i believe um just to get my feet wet. And I mean, I'm, I'm fully aware of what Dark Souls is and Bloodborne and Metal Gear and all that stuff. Like, I, I'm a person that lives on the internet and plays video games occasionally. Um, so I've seen all this stuff. But Nick, you have a little bit more experience with all three of these games, right? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I've i definitely, in terms of Bloodborne and Dark Souls, there's a good amount of firsthand experience there. Um, by experience, I mean um, failure. And, um, and then in terms of Metal Gear and Kingdom Hearts, while neither has been something that's been near and dear to my heart, I definitely know super fans, um, Kingdom Hearts, um, one of my best friends from high school was absolutely hooked on the series, uh, Metal Gear Solid, uh, my old boss might be the number one Hideo Kojima slash Metal Gear Solid fan. <laughs> to the point that he's had his fan art retweeted by Kojima. And I oh. think he considers that his crowning achievement. Um, <laughs> now, as people would say, well, maybe if he has a kid or, you know, or, you know, grandkids, then maybe he'll change that. But no, honestly, I think that this that will forever be like his most proud moment. Um, and I don't blame okay. him for that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean Hideo Kojima himself that's uh that's quite something but I mean I guess let's let's kind of like step into one of these games let's talk about Dark Souls and Bloodborne um if only because I read the comic and I didn't I knew that there was lore in this game but the lore that the comic book establishes is something insane so i nick i think you also took a look at some of this does this line up with any of the game that you saw or i guess maybe let's talk a little bit more about the game and not so much the comic Sh- sure i mean he- he- here's the bottom line right if if you came away from this comic feeling that you had simultaneously absorbed a lot of lore and yet also possibly nothing yeah then that's true to the game so i want to really <laughs> I really want to commend George Mann, the writer, because he really had a good command or no command or perfect command of the Dark Souls universe feel, Mm -hmm. which is like, Mm -hmm. wow, I feel like a lot is being thrown at me. But also, if I were to go back to the writers and ask them what this means, I might get a resounding shrug. (laughs) <laughs> um, so, and, i mean so the game the, with the game is is just as bland on the lore or it makes little to no sense i mean because the goal the goal of dark souls for anyone who hasn't played it is uh you you wake up you design a character and then you have to just get out is that the idea or am i getting it totally wrong and then it's of course it's increasingly harder and incredibly complex and precise like i i look at that game and it makes me want to cry at, at how hard it appears to be Sure. Uh, and I I tried to play like Jedi Fallen Order, which is supposed to be a quote souls born type of game um, at like a hard setting. And I gave up immediately and went straight to baby story mode um, because I just couldn't get the precision down. So that that's the kind of gamer that I am. Right. Um, well, you had wake up, right? I mean, you wake up, then you grab a brush and you put on a little makeup uh, hide the scars to fade away the shake up uh, system of a down chop suey. Um, if those lyrics are wrong, um, that's music match uh, getting it wrong. That's not me. I'm not a system sure. of down fan. Don't hold me to this. Uh, but you said wake up and I just went there. Um, 
so dark souls yeah you're right you basically you wake up and you basically need to escape uh, i think it's the first game although there are other games that certainly i think do this as well where um <laughs> there's like a huge boss um that's in the immediate area and you can choose whether or not you want to fight the boss mm -hmm. um because dark souls in a lot of ways is about learning what fights to pick what fights to avoid it's very strategic if you're someone who is prone to overthinking uh like me uh and you just want to punish yourself constantly if you haven't played dark souls it's it's perfect like any encounter that is two on one you versus two enemies any encounter that's two on one no matter how weak those two enemies are they probably still have a pretty good shot at mm -hmm. killing you mm -hmm. so there's always a lot of tactics about um can i draw one enemy away from the group so i can at least make it some sort of a one-on-one -on -one encounter um much like revenge of the sith uh there's an emphasis on having the high ground that's a big deal <laughs> um sure i i mean you laugh but you know it's it's true um and we're and of course in a good spot right and and of course one of the big concepts about these games is that when you die you drop all of your stuff mm -hmm. and the game basically you know starts up again and you're given one shot one opportunity we're just going to quote music all over the place now sure and um you have one shot to get your stuff back and if you die while trying to get your stuff back you lose your stuff completely gotcha. so i really like the series because it does demand a certain level of focus and maybe this is me getting back in my rocking chair on the porch and it's nick white get off my lawn kids except now it's the gaming version but in as much as i don't like people who put on like the office for the 15th time and just sort of let it drone on in the background while they do other things and i'm like what is even the purpose here i also like this video game because it's not something that can allow for divided attention oh because sure. the game does not even have a pause function yeah, it's it's a game that, from my limited experience and just you know watching people play it online and, and just everything I've heard about it, you know it's a severely punishing game and it requires you to absolutely pay attention and understand all of the mechanics and be able to read situations where you can eventually predict how an enemy is going to attack you so that you can get in your blows. Um, I mean, I've watched people play like the opening sequence, I think, of the original Dark Souls and like there's the big 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 boss and their goal was to defeat the big boss rather than getting killed you know initially because i think that that fight at the beginning is to teach you if you do fight this big thing you're going to die but it doesn't punish you in the same way that it does the rest of the game just to prove that like there's a whole death and reincarnation system which like if i'm pushing up my glasses on my nose here to be the um actually guy reading the comic book how come the the, the night she never lost her sword you know like did she have to go get the sword she said she died i mean come on like yeah. let's well she had one she had more. one shot right and she didn't die again sure. so sure. <laughs> sure. no um <laughs> i think I, I i think what i really what i really really like as well about these games and again I say I like these things. If people out there don't enjoy these things, I'm not saying I'm not saying these games are for, you know, all people. They're not trying to be all not. things to all people. And I, I yeah. want to be absolutely clear about that. But what I really like is that as sort of an action RPG, I feel like there are a lot of action RPGs these days that are basically grind fests, right? And if you sure. want to continue to not equip your best weapon and just roll into battle and just pound on, you know, you know, a bunch of guys with your fists and then die and just keep leveling up and just grinding it out by basically just punching a brick wall over and over again. Um, there are games that will let you get away with that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dark Souls will not let you get away with that. Like, what is right. it? Einstein said, what, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Like, yeah. that statement 
is absolutely true of Dark Souls. Like it demands your focus. And when things aren't working, it demands that you come up with a new strategy. Yeah. And I really like that. Again, some people want to sit down, wind down at the end of the day. Me, I just want to dial things up to 11 and find (laughs) a way to become even more stressed. So for me, it's perfect. But (laughs) <laughs> it's not all things to all people. As for the right. comic, I liked that it was a hyper focused narrative. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a very character focused narrative, and I liked that the characters did not seem quite as terrifying as they are in Dark Souls. In Dark Souls, sure. all of the NPCs sound like they've recorded their lines through a tin can that's filtered through another tin can. Sure. And all of them sound, all of them sort of have like the, um, uh, I, I don't know what the D and D alignment would be for unconvincingly trying to be your best friend, but will perform dark ceremonies with your corpse after murdering you. But that's basically (laughs) every NPC in dark souls. Right. uh, Is they're trying real hard to be your number one, the, the, the number one person on your speed dial, but it's not coming across like you're not sold on it for one second. So it's very, it's very um, selfish. Well, I mean, I guess I appreciate that the comic wasn't that terrifying. I mean, even though, you know, in the end there was some betrayals between characters, but um, yeah, what I I guess there's dragons in the game, right? They're like dragons are a part of dark souls in some capacity. I mean, I know there's all sorts of monstrosities that exist in that world, but um, that's exactly right. Pretty much anything horrifying in fantasy exists in those games. So yeah, I also really liked how the comic actually had, Oh gosh, was that this com that comic or was that the Bloodborne comic? One of them actually had an inventory page. Um, oh, that was definitely the Bloodborne one because this okay. one was it was very straightforward and yeah, uh, uh, or the 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 Dark Souls one. But I, I you you read the the Bloodborne's. I I I guess if you guys get a chance, I know that Titan uh, Titan Comics have been putting out like every licensed book that isn't being put out by Boom or Dark Horse. Um, and th- th- I thought overall, like the the Dark Souls book was good, um, but I don't want to you know focus too much here because I do also want to talk about Metal Gear briefly and Kingdom Hearts. So, it, uh, what were your overall thoughts for for the Bloodborne book? Since we didn't get to talk about that at all. Well, I I won't say too much on the topic, but I will say this honestly, um, I I personally like Bloodborne more than Dark Souls. Sorry. Um, although that's you know we won't go down that 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 rabbit hole. Yeah. Generally speaking, if you are new to all of the games, Bloodborne is more offensively minded. Dark Souls is more defensively minded. It really boils down to that. Hmm. The Bloodborne comic, though, honestly, I was really, really, really impressed with that. And that's coming from someone who is not an Alish. Is it Alice? I think it's Alish, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not a huge cop fan. Um, I, I think sometimes the books are deliberately really, really, really confusing. And I don't know if this is a credit to either Cot or his editor or both, Mm -hmm. but I found this story to be very focused, very character oriented. Yes. It seems like it's trying to copy lone wolf and cub a little bit, but I think that's fine. Um, I think the Peter Kowalski's artwork is just totally underrated what a perfect get for this book totally nails all of the art all of the costumes all of the characters all of the weapons perfectly and the backdrops are just if you want to look at decaying castles forever and ever like boy do i have a book for you and i was like these look so good and then of course in the back there's a behind the scenes section and we um we get to see some of these like classical paintings that Cot was giving Kowalski as inspiration. Um, and it makes a lot of sense. Like there was, and again, I, I'm not, I'm not knocking tracing. I'm not knocking, you know, model photographs or things like that for drawing. I think whatever allows you to get whatever you need out of something perfect, just go do it. Um, but 
Cott's inspiration was was perfect, and Kowalski's nailing and execution of of those concepts was perfect. I think I might actually read the second volume of this book, and if you're a really? Bloodborne fan, I think you'll like this. There's so much of a debate in the game over like what's real what's an illusion what's a dream and that's like really in cot's wheelhouse of like debating reality mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and and you know what is quote unquote real to the point that there's even like a you died screen pulled straight out of the game in the <laughs> book so i have nothing but great praise for that book honestly gotcha yeah. Well, I you're you're selling me because I didn't even realize that it was uh, Kowalski on art, and I've loved that guy's work since I first saw it in in the book Sex that he did with Joe Casey a while back. Um, and he he also did that in, uh, incredible Hulk book with Matt Kent, I think it was. Anyways, we we don't have to get into that, but yeah, that's that sounds like a great combo. I don't even know anything about Bloodborne. I might check this book out. Um, but yeah, let's before we dive even further into that, let's talk sure. really quick about Metal Gear. Um. Metal Gear Solid, I will say my only experience with the Metal Gear Solid franchise is that I had a friend in middle school who would constantly invite me over to play video games, and then he would play Metal Gear Solid, the first one for PlayStation, and I would watch. That was... oh, well, of course you would. It's like, <laughs> it's there's, not even, there's no multiplayer aspect of that game, I know. and there's not oh. even like a couch co-op, like friendly version of that game. So, it's yeah. just someone watching someone else and then occasionally going... You died. Um, or, or we would watch, and then he would talk about, like, yeah, see, Snake, he's got a thing for this girl that keeps calling him. And I was like, what's actually Meryl. happening? Why, yeah. why are why do are their faces both on the screen at the same time? What is the number dialed between them? Why is the frequency important? Oh, the Kodak uh, frequency. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. we would talk about that. I mean, but, like, I, I understand what Metal Gear is. I don't think it was until college that I understood that Metal Gear was the giant robot. Um, and that the fact that there were even <laughs> giant robots involved right. and somehow like, and I know that right. Snake has a clone and like, it, I played the original NES game, which I didn't like very much. Like my experience with Metal Gear is basically just internet interaction. Um, and I know, I think I know less about Metal Gear than I do about Dark Souls and Bloodborne. So, um, what, what are, what's your experience with it, Nick? Just briefly, I guess. Yeah. I mean, briefly, as I said earlier, I I think I know the I I think well I I know the person but I think my old boss is still the number one Metal Gear super right. fan out there. Right. Like I think literally he would like bank up his vacation time and when the Metal Gear games would come out like we wouldn't see him for like a week. <laughs> right, right. Uh like, get that's not, that lore. That's not an exaggeration and uh um I mean I've played what is generally considered blasphemy to Metal Gear fans, which is that I played, they remastered the first Metal Gear for the GameCube, and it's called Mm. Twin Snakes. And most Metal Gear fans consider playing that, you know, as I said, as as blasphemy compared to everything else. So that's Mm -hmm. the only one Mm -hmm. I fully finished. Um, I've played some of the remastered ones a little bit, but never finished those. Um, when they went to 360, um, I think Matt Fraction did a Metal Gear Solid comic at one point. Oh, so that's something people might want to look up, or at least he was one of the people contributing. So that's a thing. Um, (laughs) yeah, I mean, other than that, I know Metal Gear involves, uh, people going nano machines, nano machines, nano machines get brought up a lot. Yeah. Um I know that the phrase war war never changes or it's like war always changes. That might be fallout. <laughs> Either war is always changing or never changing. Never changing. And one of those is fallout <laughs> and one of those is metal gear. War war is never not changing. That's the sure. that's probably it. Um sure. but I know that that gets said a lot and you're right. There's like there's liquid snake, there's solid snake. There's Solidus Snake. Octagon. There, it's Octagon. Otacon. Otacon. Uh, Polygon. Right? Yep. Polyhedron. <laughs> He's the Poly- hacker. Joe Decahedron. And, um, um, and you're yeah. right. Uh, he has he has a radio called the Codec where mm-hmm. he calls up uh, his boss or um, his, um, uh, his like, handler and then hits on her. 
Right. Um, and her name is Mei Ling. And she also mm-hmm. shares trivia with him, like, uh, while he's in the middle of a fight. So that's good. Uh, yep. And he loves and he loves cigarettes and, and cardboard boxes. And he hides in cardboard boxes. Yep. And he sometimes appears in Smash Brothers games. Yeah. And, uh, um, and Psycho Mantis one time made you play the game by plugging the controller into the second person's controller spot. Dude, uh, don't ruin yeah. that. Don't ruin that for people. Oh, sorry, <laughs> let me ruin it. It's sorry. like these twenty-five-year-old old spoilers. Um, yeah. Anyway, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to harp on this game because I know that it is like a very well-loved series, and Michelle no, would not make like, fun please, of the game. It, I heard great things about it. Just unfortunately, neither of us have played it. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. Please, nobody take this as like a knock. Like I, I, I. What I'm not saying. I think the game is funny. I think what's funny is how I've probably absorbed maybe two percent of what is out there by osmosis, and it's it's very little. It's very yeah. little. I know that yeah. you wear an eye patch and you hide a lot mm-hmm. and you tranquilize people people all of the time. And if you're like a true pro, you you make it through the game without killing a single person, apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you fall on landmines and there's a guy uh, who rolls around on rollerblades that's a boss and he throws yeah. grenades at you. There's a lot of a lot of really bizarre stuff, but of course, this is Hideo Kojima that we're talking about. This is yes. the same person that brought us, you know, our very PT. latest insane game that came out. Uh, uh, Amazon Prime Delivery, the game. Uh, Death Stranding, yes. Yep. yep. So, anyways, I, I I just wanted to touch on that before we got into the final com or game that we wanted to talk about here, which is Kingdom Hearts. Metal Gear um, fans, please don't be mad. Please, like, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, I know we're a lot switching. of Metal Gear fans. I I have great appreciation, but um, it's for someone who's from the outside looking in. There's a lot of wild shit there. Okay, exactly, exactly. Um, but to to talk about this last uh, game, Kingdom Hearts. Yep. I sat down and I read Kingdom Hearts Final Remix, which is a, a manga that is read left to right for some reason, um, which features all of our favorite characters, Sora, uh, Donald Duck, Goofy, uh, and then Riku. all the various Disney characters that they visit, which I thought it was really interesting because the comic, the manga seems to basically follow what my understanding of the video games was, where... Sora and his friends get split up and his buddy betrays everybody uh, by going to the dark side, but he doesn't actually want to. He just is upset that, that Sora forgot about him, but Sora didn't forget about him. He's just like, oh, I'm glad he's okay, um, which his friend misinterprets. And then the um, Kyrie is taken as like one of the princesses or something, and they're trying to uh, steal all the princesses. Um, volume one ends with you get to see all aladdin you could see alice in wonderland and you get to see hercules and in the the volume just ends in the middle of a giant fight um but you do meet all of the you know main villains that are involved hades and jafar and um her name's not medusa but it starts with an m maleficent it's a really interesting book i didn't hate it i actually thought the pacing was really good there's like 50 chapters in this one volume because they're all like six pages each it's fucking insane and it made the Kingdom Hearts lore somehow make sense to me because going into that book, I had no idea how any of it worked. I knew that there were these heartless things. Um, and yeah, so uh, Nick, what, what's your experience with Kingdom Hearts? Because mine is just peripheral. When the new Kingdom Hearts game came out, everyone was talking about it. And I tried to like read some timeline stuff and I was like, none of this makes sense. I think like Brian David Gilbert did a video about it. Yeah. And I was, like, <laughs> fell out of my chair because uh, I was so confused. Yeah. Um, I mean, from what you've said, I think what is most shocking is I think you at least have as good of an understanding of Kingdom Hearts probably one as most actual people who have played the games. You might even have a better understanding, honestly. (laughs) Um, it's so convoluted and I, I almost feel like Kingdom Hearts is one of those things where it just sort of it's like Ouroboros in a way like it's sort of just like just eating itself like at some sure. point people were like hey this doesn't make sense and Kingdom Hearts was like we're just going to roll with this completely like we're just going to like whether we wanted it to be this way or not like this is we're just coming all the way back around and just not making any sense anymore so mm-hmm. And I mean, at some point, for some reason, other Final Fantasy characters show up, like a young version of Cloud Strife. 
shows up in the middle of a fight and i was like what i know that right story. and like, that has to do with oh gosh so for some of the kingdom hearts games the lead designer or art designer for the games was the same person who was the lead or art designer on certain final fantasy games uh-huh. and because that was the case they either wanted to or felt entitled to rope in their own personal creations from Final Fantasy games, um, which is why sometimes some of the Kingdom Hearts games have this side to them and some of them don't because it's right. based on who was in charge of the um, either the the lead designer or, or the art designer. So that's that's why that's going on. I know that sure. much. Um, as I said, like... Um, I, I knew a couple people in high school that were absolutely obsessed with like the first two. And then, um, you know, my friend Jordan, absolutely obsessed with kingdom hearts three came out. I think he just played it end to end. Um, they're, they're wild games. Like I still remember when the first one came out and it wasn't something established. Right. And so we've got this game with very, final fantasy looking protagonists Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then somehow that's been smashed up with disney and it's very bizarre yeah it's like Um, like a god king named mickey and (laughs) mickey is the king yes that's right he's like like these all-powerful king that can't save the world um and so donald and goofy who are like his dukes or something the one's a wizard one's donald is the court wizard and right I don't remember what Goofy's position is. Goofy's just a knight or something. Yeah. I don't know. This manga really, really helps set things straight. So honestly, if you get a chance, it's on Comixology Unlimited, Kingdom Hearts Final Remix 1. I I understand everything about Kingdom Hearts now. I don't think I need anything else. No, that's Uh, that's good because (laughs) honestly, it sounds like people who have played the games and come away confused, which none of them will admit it, but I think some of them have um, would be wise to check out this book because like, I remember I've read this somewhere, like the designer at one point was like, like, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I haven't really mapped out like the broad arcs of this series. Mm -hmm. He said, he's like, at the beginning, I wasn't really like planning on a, on a large scale. He wasn't Hickmaning it basically. And, um, that has resulted in basically the Kingdom Hearts series continuing to put games that take place in between other games constantly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like this game is like retconning retcons of retcons. Mm-hmm. It's it's well, it's it, on it a scale like where after it happened a couple times, they said we just have total license to do this forever, right? So yeah. I mean, and it spans like devices, like there were Game Boy games and like mobile phone games, but like also yeah. The, yeah. like when I say mobile phone games, I mean like razor phone games, you know, yeah. like that would establish things. And, you know, all, all the while you're still playing with Goofy and Mickey. Um, and I, I, I it's such a bizarre or excuse me, Goofy and Donald. And it's it's such a funny thing that this game series continues to exist and that people are so dedicated to the lore because uh, it is it is more complicated than comic book lore, and that is saying something. Um, no, I, that's, I, I find that's it so right. entertaining, um, and I, I'm glad that people get a lot of enjoyment out of this. I know that Kingdom Hearts three came out; people all over the world were freaking out, um, uh, and you know it was met with kind of mixed reviews. But uh, it looks pretty; it looks fun. Um, so yeah, I guess I, I just wanted to touch on this because the manga was is is wild, and it's it's totally worth a read because, like I said, it's very fast. And the video games, you know, they look like fun. If you're into action RPGs, I think it totally works. Um, and it, it it's always been something that was is interesting to me, but I never actually had a system to play those games on. Um, up until very recently, I probably could have could play Kingdom Hearts three, but um, yeah, I just I never I never actually sat down to play them, even though the idea was kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, there's really something there for everyone. If you just like pretty games, they're great. If you like Final Fantasy games, perfect. If you like action RPGs, there's something there. If you're into Disney, there's something there. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a wide catch-all, and a lot of people, I think, are beginning to wonder if now the door is even open for Marvel for the next one, which would be fucking 
insane. I yeah. Well, I I would love to speculate more on that, but we do have to wrap up here. Uh, and before we do, Nick, I guess uh, we, you know we were talking about this before we started recording. What's one game that you would recommend to somebody? Maybe not on this list of that we talked about today, but what's a game that if you had to sit down and and you know recommend uh, to people, what what's one that you're thinking of? So if there was one that I really 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 had to, I'll I'll, I'll just briefly give you two just to do this so my my undersung s- secret special really great game that i i can't recommend enough to a lot of people is eternal darkness uh it was for gamecube mm-hmm. it didn't really sell a lot of copies because it was early on in the gamecube's life cycle where the console was very much seen as a console for children and so and M M rated games on the console did not get a lot of traction, but if you want to play this crazy story, which spans thousands and thousands of years, it's a very like Lovecraftian story of different people from different backgrounds, from different nations across generations and generations of time, each coming into contact with this cosmic evil. Um, it's so ambitious and yet nobody's heard of it. And if you're thinking, how can I play this? I don't think it ever got ported to anything else. So you're <laughs> going to have to find, you're going to have to find a, you know, this game for GameCube or find other means of playing it on the internet, which I will neither advocate for nor elaborate upon. Um, so that's that. Uh, other than that, I would say um, I, I love, uh, Alien Isolation so freaking much. If you haven't played Alien Isolation, if you're up for a scary game, um, much like Dark Souls, this is another game where sort of everything from like timing, character positioning, knowing where you are in your environment, like it's very much like an overthinking centric game of you playing cat and mouse with a singular unkillable alien running around a space station Mm -hmm. it's visually the art design is perfect um it's terrifying it's a great science fiction story and it's more loyal to the aliens verse than many of the movies have been but you gotta be up for being scared because it's gonna happen gotcha well I, I'm definitely surprised that you didn't say Into the Breach. Um, oh, because... I have poured so many hours into that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into the Breach is a fantastic turn-based RPG, like, roguelite in some ways. I don't know how else to describe it. Just go... Pacific Rim like, meets chess, basically. Yeah, it's like a tactical RPG that has some roguelite elements, which I know is, like, it's a buzzword a couple years ago, but it's it's absolutely <laughs> true. Um, yeah. I, and uh, speaking of that, my recommendations would be if you're someone that likes Hades, like the game Hades, um, yeah. and you want to play like an action roguelike kind of like that, that's an I- isometric game. Um, I would recommend Wizard of Legend. Uh, mm. It's a, it's kind of a mm-hmm. like a pixel bit kind of game but it's you know you're a wizard that you choose elements of of act of power that you want and you pick up new things and power-ups as you go through and the goal is to defeat all of the rulers of the four elements um and become the wizard of legend it's a really really fun game um that's very fast paced um i would say more so than a game like hades um you're really dashing around the entire game and i i love those types of things um and another game in that exact same vein would be Dead Cells. I love that game to death. I think I put like 40 or 50 hours into it just because it's addicting to just continuously play over and over and over. Um, it turns out I'm a, I'm a big person who likes side-scrolling games like that. So like Super Mario 35 was basically the best thing that happened to me for a couple of weeks when it first <laughs> came out. Um, just because I love that kind of competitive nature that that game brings out and the, the, the fast pace of it. Um, so if, if I had to recommend a, a one game, though, I would definitely say Wizard of Legend. And it's so much fun um and i it's it's a great indie game to support um came out of kickstarter and it's it's just taken off it's so much such a great game um but yeah so again thank you to vishal for for supporting you know the the protests out there i mean honestly um it, it's december now when we're recording this and like your donations still help you can still donate and I, we highly encourage you to do that um so and i hope you enjoyed us you know talking about video games this is a, this is a ton of fun for Nick and I to do. So remember, you can follow us all on Twitter. You can follow Nick at Death Star Plans. You can follow me at Mike Rappin, and you can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram um, at IRCB Podcast. 
uh infinity shred does all of our music they are the best band in the universe um one xander is a great editor great person to be around just someone who's fun to talk to and i want to say thank you again to vishal thank you to everyone out there who's listening and everyone who's donated in support of the protests um it really means a lot that you guys have put your hard-earned money towards such a good cause so please continue to do that and until next time comics are good and so are you